What would Duda be like in another universe? What if he never was a blood? No bridge city? No brook? What if he never moved to New York? What if the story that y'all knew never existed? I wonder how different shit would be. Welcome to Trap Boy Remastered. So in this universe, Duda back to being 16 years old, broke, starving, but this time, he originally from New Orleans. Look, you could tell that boy from the East by his pants. Stupid as Pops was born and raised in Jamaica. And his mama, she straight out the St. Bernard Project. They met while they was both attending Southern University. They fell in love, got married, and the rest is history. He got an older brother named Mike. He 23. And he got an older sister named Michelle. She 20. They call her Enzi. They moved to Foreman Park, California in 2008 after Hurricane Gustav hit. I know Foreman Park ain't real, I made it up. J just let me rock. Foreman Park was a decent little spot in LA. You got black owned businesses, good food, good vibes. But you also got the Baker Street Bloods and the Jacktown Gangster Crips. They've been beefing since the early 80s. And smack in the middle of all of that shit, you got a small neutral neighborhood of Clover and Glenwood. 4400 Clover Street, right by the Sunnyvale Gardens. That's where Duda from. If you a kid, it's definitely somewhere you would want to grow up at. Park ball, basketball court, cookouts, everybody outside just having a good time. Now in the household, his mama, she work at Best Buy. And his pops, he a fucking janitor. <laughs> his older bro Mike got hands. Real knockout artist. So he do backyard fights in local neighborhoods. He be getting bread. His sister Shelly allegedly is in college. She got her own crib a few blocks away. I don't know what she do, but that little bitch be getting money. Duda got four close partners. Troy, his cousins Brian and Pee Wee, and his best friend Virgil. They all go to Claremont High School. But Duda, he about to start his junior year. But what was about to happen on this dark night? It changed everything in former part. Making this year unforgettable. Get it, daddy told me how to hustle. I was living in the trenches, yeah, I got it from the muscle. All them niggas, they be tripping, but we living in the struggle. So that nigga grab his piece of time, nigga, we don't tussle. We throwing all his leg, we aiming for them dreads. Them niggas, they be tripping, but they fucking with the feds. And Brody drop a dime, got my brother in the feds. Them niggas, they be tripping, but we slime back to the back. Slime with a Mac, Brody hop out with a tech. We gon' hit a nigga all up in his face and in his chest. Niggas tripping what we playing, this shit just like this shit chest. Not Duda, how many fucking times I gotta tell you to put your alarm on, bitch? Little jelly roll head ass. You Ben was supposed to get ready for school. You heard me, nigga Ben calling you. You heard me, you don't wanna listen. Get up, and you missed the bus already, bitch. You gon' have to ride that old ass pedal bike outside. Yo, Duda, my boy. Oh, shit, that's that boy Duda? What's that, bitch? Man, I see you ain't changed at all. Still got on them big-ass pants, bitch. Man, fuck you, T. You know I can't do nothing about that shit. Man, this shit was on sale, and it's the only thing my moms could afford. Damn, my bad. Anyways, man, what's that, B? When you came back, I thought you were staying back home with Oak and Nathaniel. Man, I got two hoes pregnant back in the city, son. Nigga had to make an escape, you hear me? Fuck. Damn, this nigga trip. Man, this nigga crazy. Hey, Virgil, how many hoes you cracked this summer? And be honest. Hey, one thing Virgil Stacy don't do, nigga, is hit and tell. That's confidential information, baby. Boy, yo, duck ass nigga about to start calling you Virgil the Virgin, stupid ass. <laughs> Everybody always laughing and joking, having a good time. Until some nigga try to be tough and come and mess it all up. What's up, bitch? Hey, man. What you do that for? The homie t Red got killed last night by them op-ass niggas and your bitch-ass uncle still playing both sides. So is he ran with us or them crab niggas? Hey, look. I don't know nothing about none of that, bro. All I do is study chemistry and math. Man, fuck all that. Who you playing with, the boy? Facts. I'm trying to figure out because the day September 1st. 2K ain't even dropped yet, boy. Who the fuck you playing with? Nigga, bat the fuck out you, boy. You tripping. <laughs> Y'all got jokes, huh? Y'all niggas know how I get down outside of school. Man, nigga, never seen you outside of school, boy. And we be outside every day. Nigga, don't know you. Man, fuck that bitch. Come here. Shit just turned into a Kentucky bar fight out of nowhere. Nigga was really confused on why dude came at Virgil like that out of all people. Principal Vanette bald head ass wasn't even trying to hit none of that either. 
All them boys got suspended for five days. On the first day too. Ain't that a bitch? So that's what you doing now, huh? You punching on people and shit now. Why the hell are you acting up in school, dude? You keep fucking run, you're gonna be a school shooter. You heard me? What you doing, man? <laughs> the bumper clad and then rest the fire. Now you better shut that shit up, nigga. Nigga not trying to hit none of that Jamaican talk right now, bitch. Shut that shit. Shut that roster shit up, bitch. Nigga not even trying to hit none of that. Bubba Clyde! Bubba 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 Clyde! Now look, you won't punish me for a whole month. No TV, no, no little D videos, none of that shit. You heard me? And you and your brother and your cousin, y'all gonna go to the store and get my fucking food, bitch. Cause we gonna eat tonight. You heard me? So get your ass up and go get that food. <laughs> Later that night, Duda went to go pick up food from the Chinese spot with Mike and his cousin Pee Wee. They stood in front of the store and waited while the food was being cooked. Duda loved being around his cousin. He always got so much game from hearing Pee Wee talk about growing up in the city. That nigga done did it all. But little did he know, that would be the last time he would ever hear his cousin talk. Nigga pulled up and got busy super quick. Got hit. Mike got hit. He heard them shots ringing and just took flight. Pee Wee was gone. But Mike, I don't know. He might make it. What will happen next? Stay tuned for the next episode. And no, it won't be in a month. Shit finna get crazy. And if you a real supporter, I got another video dropping tonight on my Azul 2K channel. Real dope content, you won't want to miss it. Likewise. Duda was all messed up in the head after seeing his brother Mike get popped in front of the China store like that. And his big cousin Pee Wee died at the scene. Man, that made it even worse. Then days later, this dude named Cortez from Glenwood Ave got killed taking out the garbage. All over the news, good kid gunned down an alley. But he wasn't no ordinary kid though. Dude was a four-star football recruit that went to Claremont High. All type of D1 offers. He was just about to announce his commitment to USC that next week. It was hella hot in Foreman Park. Three murders in three days? Man, the police knew what was up. So they was out asking questions all around the hood. They went door to door. They even tried to talk to Dude. But he know better to stay stitched lip. That boy from New Orleans, so you know what he on. Right, like it's in style. Like it's legal or something. Can't all that riding. The rats in the dead, New Orleans. But even if he wanted to talk, he couldn't. This man was spooked, bro. He wouldn't talk, eat, sleep, or nothing for days. I mean, he lost his big cousin right in front of his face, and his brother in the hospital fighting for his life right now. All he could do was think about how his auntie and cousin B was holding up. Ryan just lost his big brother. Now it's just him and his moms, making him the man of the house now. At the funeral, them boys was all just standing there looking stupid with them Steve Harvey looking ass suits. Looking at Pee Wee casket in the ground. And Brian could only say one thing as he stood there and watched. I'ma make these niggas feel less for son. B was going through it. But dude that had a lot going on at home himself. His suspension went from five days to two weeks. After parents was concerned the fight was gang related and seeing the increase in murders. And Mike had to go through an intense surgery. Doctor saying the way he got hit, he might never be the same. And he needs a lot of treatment and therapy to fully recover. All of that gonna cost. Moms and pops ain't even able to pay the real bills. With a Best Buy and a janitor check? <laughs> Man, come on. Duda was the only kid left in the house. He knew what he was gonna have to do. It's time to step up. Hold up, that boy Troy calling me. Yeah, hello? I'm outside working, what's that? Man, whatever you doing, drop that shit ASAP. Reezy having a meeting over by the co-wash, and he talking about putting niggas on. Shit, slide right now. So we gonna go ahead and go to the meeting. It's at Virgil Uncle Car Wash. Let's see what they talking about. If you here right now, that means you wanna be a part of something. A family, a brotherhood. Clover Street been on some neutral shit for years, but that shit is over now. Niggas is out here killing our people thinking shit is sweet. And I know a lot of y'all. Right here, this is Reezy, real Clover Street OG. 
And guess who uncle this is, y'all? Y'all ain't even gonna believe this. Virgil. Lil' nerdy ass Virgil is related to this man. Crazy. But as y'all can see, that nigga Reezy was fed up. After that fight at school, Virgil called his uncle Reezy. And Reezy called a meeting with Baker Street's OG, Big Wack. And Wack was telling Reezy that that neutral shit wasn't gonna fly no more after the loss of T-Red, who was Wack's oldest son. Clover Street was either riding with them or the Jacktown Gangsta Crips, who they thought was responsible for killing T-Red. That's why Deshaun pressed Virgil at school. It was to send a message. Reezy wasn't going for none of that. He'd been in the streets for years without banging colors. His name held weight on his own, but this was a new day. So after that meeting, the Bloods was looking for somebody from Clover Street or Glenwood to make an example. And that example ended up being Pee Wee, Cortez, and Mike. Clover Street from now on, we on our own shit. We ain't rocking with blue flags, and we damn sure ain't rocking with red flags. We calling this shit Clover Gangster Foes, CGF, Clover and Glenwood families. If you wanna get put on and change your life, little niggas, we'll be over there in Sunnyvale Gardens later tonight. So make the right decision. I'm done talking. Young Duda got a decision to make. Do he go the good route and find a better job so he could help out the family? Or do he hop in them streets and get busy? He just sat in his room and tried to think all this shit out. But he couldn't focus because his pops was in the other room rapping. The crazy part is, Duda had no clue what was about to happen. Yeah. I am Jamaican, I eat a lot of bacon. I wake up in the morning and play my PlayStation. No, not the watch. Oh no, not my Fubu trench coat. No, everybody get down. Dude, are you okay? Dude, are you okay? Are you okay, dude? Yeah, I'm good. Oh shit, ma. Yo, mom's is bleeding, man. Say, man, call 911. Oh no, not my wife. No, Bamba Clad. Yo, B. What? Yeah, them niggas just shot my house up, bro. Man, what? One of them bullets hit mom in the leg, bro. I'm about to be on some real murder shit, B. Nigga killed your brother. Nigga shot my brother. And now nah, nigga just shot my fucking moms, man. A nigga gotta die in the next 15 minutes. That's how I'm coming. Look, calm your ass down, son. I've been working on a little something. I'm gonna crop niggas out the picture before the sun come up, and that's a promise. I really got murder on my mind, for real, son. Man, where you at? Let me slide with you. Nah, brother, that ain't true. Pee Wee always told me keep you out this shit. He will not want you out here standing on business like we do. I'ma take care of it. Hello? The dude's name is Rosemo Capone. He a real love member in the Bigger Street organization. He rap and do hood vlogs on YouTube and shit. And he posted a recent video and he said, quote, Fuck Jack Town and Clover Street. We're smoking on Pee Wee Pack. That boy gotta go. He drive a purple Camaro, as you can see in the vlog. Look like the traffic getting dry right now. I think we could just fuck around and dome check him right now. Oh, he done walked off. I get up, we could just play it off and act normal like we just walking. Bro, this a real mission. Type WVID in the chat if you enjoying this, cause I know for sure I am. Go ahead, bitch. Pull that bitch out, man. Get ready. Oh yeah, come here, bitch. This looking like Duda and everyone around him becoming a target after that fight at school. Big Wack was sending niggas to touch whoever wasn't with them, especially Jack Town. Now a neutral neighborhood they made up again? Yeah, Foreman Park about to be dangerous. How's she holding up, Doc? She's gonna be okay. It looks like it's only a flesh wound, so that's a good thing. We just want to make sure it's not an infection or anything. But what's gonna happen next? Stay tuned. Next one coming soon. Oh, I think I'm cold with these fucking cliffhangers, man. Duda smoked on his back porch, he realized 
When he decided to hop in the fight for Virgil at school that day, he unknowingly chose this side. I mean, that's at least how them Baker Street niggas saw it. That was all the confirmation they needed. All I know is, right about now, Duda wanted to get his get back for his moms and his brother getting shot. And we can't forget them niggas killed his cousin Pee Wee. On the other side for the Bloods, Rosemo's death was hitting the Bloods hard. They was hurting right now, cause that was their only talent. And he was an outstanding, well-loved member. And his death was all sponsored by B. B was laying low at the crib with his girl after taking that leg shot, recovering, doing some self-reflecting. Reezy even came through to thank him personally for the work he put in with killing Rosemo. And he wanted him to come join the crew. Being from New Orleans, you looked at as a flunky if you joined a game. But B decided to join the force cause Reezy made him an offer he couldn't refuse. So he was with it. So once Duda heard B join and Troy was finna join, he was sold. Cause whatever his family with, he with. He was standing on family business for sure. What's down with y'all boys? Hey, what's up, little nigga? You decided to come home, huh? What took you so long? It's almost been a week since the meeting. Man, I've been dealing with a whole lot of family shit, man. But you know I'm with it, though. I hear you. You know what this is, right? This grown man business. Only way out this shit is in a box, you know, right? What's your name, little nigga? Makai. But niggas call me Duda. Oh shit. Ain't you cool with my little nephew, Virgil, right? Yeah, son. That's my little partner. I heard a lot about you, Duda. You and your boys held shit down at the school for my nephew, man. I appreciate that. Your boy Troy just got put on earlier. I'ma make sure to look out for y'all since y'all kept shit real with my family. For sure, for sure. That's a hundred. Right, right. Alright. <laughs> yeah, I know what to do. See, these niggas is supposed to be my brothers, nigga. <laughs> this a brotherhood, nigga. Wait, hold up. I think he had to get knocked out four times to become a real Clover Street foe. Let me know in the comments how y'all think Duda did with his, uh, canonizing. No nick. But one of the niggas that was in the car that night, he was talking to one of her friends on the strip, and he was bragging about it and shit, you know, trying to sound cool. She said he'd be hanging at this little repair shop over on Teller Street. Man, we ain't doing no more talking. What's up? Hey, man, what, what the fuck is this? Don't act like you don't know, nigga. You know a Zam. Bro, I don't even know what's going on, homie. What y'all trying to rob me or something? Y'all know who I am, right? Yeah, I know exactly who you with, Kush. You with the niggas who shot up my fucking house last week and almost killed my mom. Oh, you do the? Hey, man. Look, I was just a driver. I told Beesky that shit was stupid. Look at you. Whole rat. You done gave up your la partner, your role, and everything. Fuck them niggas' blood. Hey, look. I can show you where Beesky at. Just don't kill me, homie. I got a son. Man, get your bitch ass in the Beesky. So, look, man. I'm gonna give you the choice, huh? You tell me who told you to shoot my crib up, and I'm gonna let you go. If you don't, my man over here gonna blow your shit back. Always knew Kush wasn't built for this shit. Hey, Duda, Troy, we both know y'all ain't no gangsters. Look at Troy, nigga. Got a shotgun. You wouldn't even shoot a bird in Blaine County. You soft as baby shit, homie. Oh, yeah? How you figure that, son? Y'all niggas was always good boys growing up. Had all the toys and games. Yeah, nigga. I shot your house up. That was my work. I take that charge. I hope you find closure knowing I almost took your bitch ass out. Now look, I'ma get back in my car and I'ma forget that y'all pulled a gun on me. And I'ma let this shit slide. You know personally that I shoot shit. Ask your moms, nigga. You know they ain't stopped making guns when they made jaws, right? Looks to me you ain't even bring the one they made for you, son. <laughs> you too comfortable, little bitch. I did what I did because your block chose the side of the enemy. And once y'all decided to fight Deshaun at school, you and your crew was enemies in our eyes. I knew where you stayed at, homie. And I shot that bitch up. And you ain't gonna do shit about it because you's a bitch. You right, son. Troy, smoke this nigga. <laughs> Bitch ass nigga.
okay, I kept my word, bro. Just let me go. I'ma let you go. Thank you, bro. You ain't never gonna see me again in the city. I'ma let you go talk to God about it. No! Dota was a two-time demon within a matter of hours. From now on, niggas was gonna know he wasn't fucking around when it came to his family. If you with him, he'll put it all on the line for you. But if you on the other side, shit was a scary sight. This moment right here was the birth of one of the most ruthless gangsters to ever come out of Foreman Park. And while Duda was out here taking souls, Virgil was in the lab experiment like he usually do. But this experiment went wrong and accidentally created something that might be bigger than the crack epidemic ever was. I don't know. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. I got more on the way. Please just calm down, nigga. God damn. I got shit on the way, bro. Love y'all, niggas. Hope y'all enjoy. Run this up. Because I'm coming back with some bangers. After standing on business, Duda and his crew all went to Blaine County to get rid of the car with Kush body in it. Duda and Troy drove in the car that Baby Dang just stole, and Baby Dang had to burn the car with the body in it. They picked Dang up at this little gas station after he was done, and Duda drove everybody back home to Foreman Park. That drive home gave Duda some time to really think about all that's been happening to him in just a month the loss of his cousin big brother and moms get shot mom's pregnant he can't go to school gang wars and now he just caught two bodies and these niggas sitting here sleep like this shit is supposed to be happening or something man all i could just hope is that they make it home once duda made it home I think he realized what he had just done. That shit was eating him alive. Made the homie sick to his stomach. Then he started throwing up all over the place. When he looked in that mirror, he could see that that youthful innocence was gone. He really recognized he the reason that some people ain't here no more. And he knew that he was gonna do it again if he had to, because he had a family to protect. He ain't no little boy no more. He a grown man standing on grown man business. So him and his family will be taken care of. All we could do now is just, shit, just sit back and just watch. As of right now, he need to just try to get some sleep. He had a long night. As y'all could see, they staying at a family friend house right now. So he on the couch with it. Oh, what a quad dude. I already know what time it is, son. I'm coming down here with another rap for ya. Well done. I said, boom! Dudo, what the hell are you not in school? You're cock blocking me and that's the number one rule. Got your mama in the room, bent over on the stool. I'm about to dive in it like that shit was a pool. Gerber, these hoes. Gerber, these hoes. Gerber, these hoes. Don't do it, Duda. Don't Gerber, these hoes. You get it? Don't baby these bitches. Don't Gerber, these hoes. Pause. I had a long night, man. Watch out. What you doing here coming in so late, boy? You pay no bills. Man, I was with this little, with this girl, Pops. I got some cutty last night. A tea? What you mean, a tea? Yeah. Dude, you get no a tea. Your pee pee is too small for a tea. Well, she ain't tell me that. Son, you out here believing these hoes? Ah, what a quan. I just told you in my song, my rap song. Don't gerber these hoes. What you doing? Get out. You're too lazy. You need a job. We work hard for our stuff. You know the Irish Jamaicans. Say, Daddy, come in the back and beat this coochie up right quick. You got me out here waiting too fucking long. I'm standing on this fucking step stool, bitch. Ha <laughs> ha! What the quan? I'll be back, son. Ugh. Man, look at this. These some niggas that's really living life for real. Reezy and the older dudes always did shit like this on the block. They'll pull up on Clover Street and just stunt, bumping some good ass music. Man, they had nice cars with dope ass rims, fly fits, chains, 
and you know the bitches they was hitting was top five. Clover Street, well, the whole Foreman Park was always known for street shit and getting lots of money, especially back in the day. Let me give y'all a history lesson. It all really started in the late 60s, early 70s with the Claremont Gangsters. Delvin Hayes, Pretty Ricky, and that nigga Smitty Boy. You got the infamous wrecking crew out the Sunnyvale Gardens, Pony Boy, Tito, and the legendary Clay Jackson. Dude was like the landlord of Clover Street back in the day. Clay had some young protégés that he raised up, and that turned out to be Frankie and Pimpin' Pat, some of the flyest niggas to ever come out of FP. They had it all, and they wasn't even on that Bloods and Crips vibe either. Like I told y'all, this block was neutral, but times have changed now. Nah. We'll get to all of that gang banging beef history later. Right now, nigga, we talking about legends. Nowadays, we got Reezy, Noon, and Munch. The 44s, you know, they putting on for Clover Street right now. The Benson brothers run the ghetto boys over on Alcott. Lucius, Slimmy, and T-Bone. Man, they be getting to it as always. Throwing big parties and shit. We got the G-Star hustlers from Macklin Avenue. Big Felix, Slick, Babyface. Man, them niggas be getting hella money. You got Big Screech from Fairline Homes. Man, this dude been trapping since Duda lost his first tooth. No cap, he up there with Reezy and them when it come to getting paid. But he doing it all by himself. Last, you got this dude they call Pusher Man. Only people who remember what he looked like, they ain't even allowed to tell a story. Dude like a myth in our section. His name still hold weight in FP till his day though. Shit. He might be the only person who could stop this war that's going on right now. But anyway, seeing them flexing like that was all motivation to the young niggas. And Duda and his partners was finna be a part of that now since they joined the foes. Duda wanted that name, that power. And right now, he need to figure out how he was gonna get it. So let me tell y'all what the fuck Troy was talking about. So Virgil know a lot of goofy ass white boys from the rich part of town cause he go to this like science camp every summer. And he said a lot of them dudes don't even be home half the time. They be out with their friends and shit while their parents on business trips. Virgil was running this down to Troy with no ill intentions. He was just talking, but he was telling all this to the wrong nigga. Troy heard all that and was like, man, we finna rob these niggas. Hitting them houses got my nigga do the mind right after all the bullshit that's been going on. He got some money from hitting them houses, got a little bread he took from his stash house, and he still got that 16 grams on him that we gotta get off too. Shit was on the up and up for my nigga Duda when it came to getting his money. Shit, at this point, that's at least keeping him sane. But little did he know, one decision he made was on his way to come back and get him. Police say a man was found in the trunk of a car here in Blaine County. A group of joggers spotted a suspicious vehicle and heard someone screaming for help in the trunk. One of the joggers immediately contacted police. It has been reported that this individual was shot and he was taken to the hospital where his condition is currently unknown. The identity of the male has not yet been released. If you have any information, please call Crime Stoppers. This is Rokisha Sanchez with Weasel News. Getting that first little bit of money made me want to make some quick changes, you know. Upgrade the appearance, unlock a few badges or something. I was getting tired of looking like this. Man, it should be illegal to dress like this in 2022, brother. So I took the bus over to the La Strip Mall to go get me some clothes. All the La Sharons and Karens was acting like they were scared to walk next to me like I'm a criminal. Well, guess what, bitch? I am a criminal, stupid ass. They had a few La Polos I was rocking with, but then I see they had a pair of UNC Jordan 3s. And he was in my size. It was the perfect fit. I felt like the little orphan Calvin Cambridge in that store. But y'all know I ain't living like that. Y'all know I got the bread, so I paid for my new items and I went elsewhere. Y'all bear with me. I can't even curse until the four minute mark. It was just me and mom's in the crib. She just slept the whole time, trying to shake back. I don't know where my pops at, but that boy ain't come home or nothing. He probably on the clock. You know that boy got like eight jobs. So since we got a little bread now, I'm about to make a quick little store run, you know, so I can make sure my mom's got the snacks and packs, you know, when she wake up. If she hungry, she can have all the oodles and noodles that she want. She might even be able to get some fried chicken. You know that's her favorite. Anyway, I'm, I'm rambling, man. Come take that walk with me. Sanchez, 
say Reezy. What's up, nigga? Who you again? Oh, uh, my name Duda. Um, I'm one of Virgil partners, the one that got knocked out four times. Oh shit, what up, fam? This my little nigga football. Hey, this little nigga so Clover Street, he got knocked out four times just to be put on the set. What's up? You need some? Actually, yeah, I do. Well, speak up, nigga. Closed mouths don't get fed. What's on your mind, little homie? Shit is rough around the crib, bro. Man, my mom's ain't working. My pops getting paid under the table, so they pay him whenever they feel like it. I got another sibling on the way. I'm just trying to step up and provide, bro. Mm-hmm. So I was trying to see if I could get down with what y'all be doing, bro. I mean, y'all niggas be making real money. I'm trying to get down like y'all. I can handle this shit, dog. I'm telling you. I like this little nigga, man. All right, all right, look. First off, this game is for the wolves. Shit is straight cutthroat. And I don't think you ready to do what we be out here doing. I wouldn't have you out here like that. So this is what I'm going to do. I need some good designer shit that I can flip on the street. You and your little homies go up to the mall and take some nice shit and bring it back to me. I got some bread for y'all and we could make that your little hustle. Everybody get paid. Yeah. Alright. Sound like a plan, OG. Alright. For sure. Get out with me when you got the shit. Yeah, for sure. Man, y'all hear this old ass nigga? Dude talking about me boosting clothes for him. Fuck this nigga think I am, jukebox? This nigga Reezy don't wanna put niggas on for real. He wanna keep the young niggas controlled. He want us to stay under him forever. And a nigga like me, that ain't gonna work, partner. I done made my decision. I was just giving Reezy a chance to show his true colors. We finna rob that nigga Screech tonight. Shit, how I'm feeling, we might fuck around and rob that nigga Reezy too. This how we gon' do it. When I walked past the nigga while he was on the phone, I overheard him saying he was getting the drop of that dog tonight, if y'all know what that mean. And he said what he was gonna be at and all that. I know everything I need to know. He was just talking out loud, just comfortable. He probably knew I was listening, he just probably ain't think I'd be the nigga to take his shit. So therefore, he finna get his shit took. I'm finna get dressed, put some bullets in his gun, and I'ma catch y'all niggas later. Nigga, get that shit up for a nigga order your noodle out ya. Ah, youngster. <laughs> you really think it's safe to fuck with me, right? I mean, you do know I get niggas gone. You might as well go ahead and kill me if you plan on taking my shit. Forming part way too small. We gonna find your dumb ass by in the morning. Man, all that shit you said sound like a young boy song, bitch. It sound good. Fuck you talking about, nigga. Give me that fucking bag, little bitch. I'm really finna smoke your booger tea looking ass, man. You keep fucking playing. Alright, youngster. You got it. Just remember what I said, though. Yeah, I. Right. Nice doing business with you, bitch. You ain't too low, you are too slow, bitch. Oh, shit, son. He these niggas trying to kill me, son. Y'all niggas want to come and get it then. I took your partner's shit and he ain't getting it back. Everybody in this party is tripping 
bulls right now. We're about to make hella peace. I know y'all like, damn, daughter, how you made it out of that alive? Man, I don't even know, son. It must have been the ghost of Pee Wee watching over me. I don't know, because the way them boys were sparking at that car, I for sure thought it was over. But look at all that progress, though, son. We got them bands with the rubber bands. Nigga got work in here. Shit about to get crazy in the next episode. More money, more problems. All I know is I got some. I be telling niggas right. this shit cool right here. Yeah. This that kill Boy, shot beat. Niggas better subscribe. I'm finna watch that Risky Rise and Dougie Doucet next after this. That little bit baby J gotta drop some shit. That bit go up. He got a two year old baby on his channel. That bit ain't dropping two years. Man, what is you doing in here, son? Get the fuck out, man. I'm trying to shit. Dude, where'd you get all this from? Nigga, you got a gun? Man, close the door. Watch out, son. Nigga, do you even know what to do with that? Fuck no, man. But I'ma figure it out. It ain't like your duck ass here to help take care of mama. And this new baby on the way. Man, just watch out. I'ma figure this out. Mind your fucking business. I can help you sell it. And why the fuck would I rely on you for anything, Michelle? You always come around after some shit that already happened. Nigga ain't seen you since Kwanzaa. And it's sad because you left down the street, man. Pee wee die, you pop back up. Mikey and mama get shot, you pop back up. And now you see me about to get busy selling this puppy child, and now you wanna pop back up talking about let me help you? Man, close that door like I said, man. I'm trying to shit. Dude, I know niggas who sell this shit for real. It's what I'm good at. And you need my help. You don't know shit about selling nothing. Brother man, this is my last time. Clo close that door. Well, if I can't help you, then I'ma tell mama that you got all this dope in these people's house. I mean, look at all this shit. You lying. Mama! What? All right, all right, damn, son, chill. Okay, okay. What you say? You got it. I guess we uh we business partners now. While I'm sitting here politicking with my sister in this small ass bathroom, things was about to heat up between me and the Baker Street Bloods. Man, who did that shit to you? Man, it was one of them bitch ass Clover Street niggas, huh? One of them killed Beastie. I don't know who did that though. Ah, damn. But I do know the nigga that shot me. His name was Duda. Duda, huh? Okay. You let me know where to find this little Duda nigga at. Look like we got some new enemies. Well, they might be new to me, but they definitely old to y'all. Smack and Shamar.